yeah, it's one of those days. What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's video, we're working on this beautiful blacked out Jeep Grand Cherokee and we're doing a full paint correction and ceramic. And we're doing a full paint correction and ceramic coating. As you can tell, it's raining, it's horrible out, and it's really raining, not just a light drizzle, like it will pour like crazy. Here's what we're gonna do. The customer has already washed and prepped it to a degree. We are just going to clean up the wheels, tires, wheel wells, just double check the paint really quickly out in the rain. I'm not gonna give it a full wash out there. I'm going to just do the wheels, tires, wheel wells, and then pull it in. And then we'll see what we need to do. We might just do a quick rinseless wash and then decon the paint and clay bar it and things that we need to do inside the garage here as much as I can. And then we'll continue with the paint correction and of course, in the next day or two, finish with the ceramic coating. And we're going to be using a new to us ceramic coating, the Adams ceramic coating. So really excited about that one. Comes with a little black light and all of that stuff to be able to see the coating being applied. So we'll bring you in close and show you how that coating is applied and how to use the black light. It's a first for me, so I'll be learning also, but we'll check it out together. All right, guys, so I gotta get started on these wheels. I'll just leave the camera here and you can watch as I clean wheels. Kind of boring. I wish I had a company logo poncho. That'd be cool. That was crazy. So just did all the wheels, rinsed everything, the wheel wells and all that, just brought it in. So just gently feeling the paint, it actually feels already really smooth. Even all the way down on the bottom panels, it feels really smooth. So basically, uh, the customer is actually a long time YouTube follower. So thank you so much for following us. That's, that's pretty impressive. And he is in the Richmond area. So he was able to bring the vehicle to us and basically, um, he started polishing it um, and he was going to coat it with the Adams paint coating system. So this is like their five year kit. It's really, really nice. New to me, I haven't used this kit at all yet. So this will be very interesting to use this. I'm sure it'll be, you know, just like all the other coatings that we apply, um, but it does come with the black light. So that's really cool. So we're gonna see what that does uh, for the coating and you know how we see it as it's applied onto the paint. So that's kind of interesting. So the customer had already started on the vehicle, but it ended up being quite the job. So instead of trying to tackle it himself, he brought it to us and we're going to take care of uh, the rest of it where he left off. The hood and this fender going into the door was already polished, but we'll you know just look it over and refine it, make sure everything is looking good uh, for the coating. And we're going to not shoot for 100% perfection. My paint corrections, I do not guarantee 100% perfection. I think it's unreasonable and somewhat dangerous to do that on newer vehicles, even on older vehicles, on any vehicle. Clear coat can be thin on newer vehicles and you want to be really careful and you don't want to get everything 100% out, even some of those deeper scratches because you're going to compromise the clear coat. So there's tons of research online um, check out Brian from Apex Detailing. He does a lot of research into paint systems and he knows a lot about how the UV protection in the clear coat will migrate to the top and the more that you abrade, the more that you remove that, microns at a time, you are removing years of protection in the clear coat. So be very wary of that. Do your research um, about clear coat before you either bring your vehicle to a professional detailer or before you compound it yourself. You want to know all that stuff before you get into compounding and polishing and trying to shoot for perfection because it's unrealistic and it can be dangerous for the paint. There are some detailers out there who really try to get 99% of the paint looking perfect, but they know what they're doing. They have the proper paint depth gauges and even they don't go full 100%. They always have a minor percentage there um, to make sure that the paint is going to last on the vehicle. And usually when they do that, they're putting on multiple layers of ceramic coating 
and that is going to add some thickness and add a lot of protection to the paint. So you do need to do that. All right, guys, so let's get to washing the vehicle. I have a bucket here with a bunch of nice soft microfiber towels. I'm gonna to fill that up with water and we are going to use American Detailers Garage Wipeout. This is a waterless and rinseless wash. We make it into a bunch of different things. We currently use it as our glass cleaner because it's so highly dilutable, it's crazy. Okay, so waterless wash, we'll put uh, one to 32 in a couple of gallons of water here. We'll dilute that properly. And I'm going to also put it in like a little bottle like this, diluted. Um, so I can spray the panels beforehand and then wash it down with the towel. So let's get started on that. So this is good. The paint really is not even dirty at all. Even transporting it here, it's like picking up nothing. The paint feels nice and smooth. So that's, that's a good sign. Go over the panels very, very gently. Man, I can already feel though. It's, it's awesome. It's very, very smooth. It's not picking up anything. Even all the way back here, it feels, feels really good. Oh, don't drop it. This is great. He did a really, a really good job of deconning it. Really good job. All right, paint is cleaned and there's no clay barring needed. It was already done. Paint is feeling nice and smooth. It's great. So we're gonna go straight into the drying and inspection. And then we'll get into finding the right polishing combo and get this paint looking as good as possible. I'm probably gonna take my blower from my trailer, avoid the raindrops, and blow dry everything also. That's, that's really important. When you're compounding or polishing and it's vibrating the paint, water is going to come out from all the different crevices and get right into your polishing pad and drive you nuts. So it's really best to dry everything, bone dry, as much as humanly possible because you don't want those drips of water interfering with your polishing. I might need to get a second blower to put in the garage. Hmm, that's a good idea. vehicle is dried, blown dry as much as I could. Now let's take a look at the paint. And uh, wow, not too bad. A few little marks here and there that can be refined, but wow, the paint is in really nice shape and it's that beautiful black metallic. I love that color. That is nice. All right. Yeah. So there's a little bit of like hazing and, and down here too. So we can take care of that. That will all be polished out. Uh, that's just a little bit of wetness that I forgot to uh, dry up. That's not a problem. But looking at the paint, this shouldn't be too bad. It's very, very light, light hazing, almost like it's been compounded a little bit. There's still some light swirls in there that you can see, yeah. So we'll do a couple of test spots and see what combination we can use. Oh yeah, there's more typical spots up here. How is it down here? Yeah, typical down here. We'll see what we can do with that. But overall, that's not too bad. And then you have the black gloss lettering and you got the plastic in between there also. And then the faces of these, we want to look as good as possible. There's a little bit of, a little bit of scratching there. So we'll tread carefully on those too because the clear coat can be very thin on that. Now I did notice one other little weird spot here in this corner. Almost looks like burn through. Maybe someone at the dealer did something. It feels a little rough, feels a little dry. So we're going to tread very carefully around this area because that could be burnt through already, kind of along this edge here. Yeah, that does not look good. So we have to be really careful around that edge. I might just hand polish it a little bit and see what we can do. There's a deeper scratch there. Overall, there's not a ton of heavy defects, just weird marks here and there throughout the paint but nothing that we can't handle or at least improve upon and make it look 90% better. 
<laughs> I would say. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I think the hood is just gonna need a refinement, but as we move over here, it's definitely gonna need a lot more as we go into the door and lower section. So I might do a couple of test spots down here and see how the paint reacts, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, there's lots of hazing right around there. We wanna make that nice and crisp and clear. So that might just need a little bit of refining. All right, let's work on this panel. I have my lights here. I hope you guys can, yeah, you can pretty much see it here. So I'm gonna use the orange Lake Country pad. It's kind of the middle ground. We'll see how it cuts and finishes. And I'm going to just use a finishing polish. So 205 from Meguiar's. I could use 210, but, but I have plenty of 205. So I'm gonna use that because I still love it. Put a couple of drops of M205 on the pad. That's way too much, that's okay. It'll prime the pad. I don't really prime pads traditionally. I put a couple of drops, work it into a panel, and it kind of primes the pad itself, so I don't worry about that. So let's go with this section here. I can definitely see micro marring in there. It's definitely affecting the clarity. And you may hear a change in the speeds. I'm gonna change the speed to what I need, and then we'll see what happens. It does have a trigger lock, so that's good. So I think this is the lowest. This is the highest. That actually felt pretty good. Like it feels nice to work with. So that's a plus. Hello, this is Phil with Miranda Detailing. Good. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh wow, nice. Okay. Okay. Okay, that that sounds good. We can uh we can definitely do that. Um let me check my All right. Sorry about that. Had to take that call. So, this is impressive. I am very happy with this polisher. I don't think it's going to work for cutting necessarily. It doesn't have the torque, but I'm going to try it out anyway. It might be okay for little scratch removal, a little polishing here and there. If I were to use this thing over the entire vehicle and really heavily compound with it, I doubt it would do what I need it to do. Maybe on soft clear coat it, it could. But first impressions, it feels good. It feels like a nice polisher. I wish it had a speed dial. I wish it had a few of those extra features, but SPTA did a really good job on this. Is it a Roops killer? No, 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 it's not. I mean, it barely even competes with it. It's just a nice entry level 15 millimeter cordless polisher. Three speeds, that's it. But again, it, it just feels good. Now, let me show you what it actually did. So, I don't know if you remember what it looked like before, but guys, check that out. So I left this side, I went over into here, so that now it's kind of hard to see. Let me grab this light instead. Okay, so it was hazy. See that haze right there around the light? That's just micromarring. But now it's super clear. So it cleared that up with no problem. That looks really, really nice. So up close, looks like a planet and stars, right? Now look at that orange peel. You can also see the orange peel. That you see in new cars. That's just going to be there. There's nothing you can do about that. I mean, you can flatten it out, but I would never do that. I would not recommend that. And it's weird. It's only in some sections. Some sections are flatter than others, probably because, you know, the thickness of the clear coat and how it's sprayed onto the vehicle will make a difference. So I didn't go all the way up to the edge here. I'm going to work into this panel, but I did just this door here just to test it out. I'm going to go back over to that side where I usually start. I always start on the passenger side fender. I, don't ask me why. I just do it that way. And I work around this way and around the whole vehicle. I just started here because this was one of the sections that I wanted to see if it would make a big improvement on. And, and it did. Now let me go down here. And these swirls are a little bit worse. So let me see if I can work on these with the machine and make this look like this. Okay, so I applied just a little bit more onto here and I'm gonna work on this bottom portion here and just see what it does. It's still set on the highest speed and I'm just gonna work with it like that. 
but I like that there's no cord to be annoying. All right, let's just try this just because I wanna see what it will do. Bump it down to a white polishing pad, put just a few drops, and I'm gonna do the section again just because I saw that little bit of hazing down here, probably because it hits the curve here and it slows down the pad. I love that 205 is very easy to work with, very forgiving, wipes off beautifully. You want that for a finish polish. You want it to wipe off extremely smooth because if you are dealing with some delicate paint, even a nice towel is going to mar it up just a little bit. All right, that cleared it up really nice. So we might have to cut with the orange pad if we need to and then finish with the white pad. I think that's where we need to be. I am going to work a little bit more down here because that needs a little bit more refining, but still, that's just minor, minor stuff. The rest of it is really going to come out awesome. I'm going to see if I can get the whole thing done with this guy. I'm going to have to switch out batteries. Let's see, I've done only a few panels, and when you hit the trigger once, it'll tell you, okay, so it's on the yellow, so it's not in the green anymore. The battery life on the right side there, that's how you can tell. So it's in the yellow, but that's okay. We'll keep on going, and then we'll switch out batteries if we need. And let's get this thing all polished. <sighs> If you're wondering what towel I'm using, this super nice plush blue towel is actually a sample that I got. I got a couple of different samples from Alibaba.com. And of course it's, you know, manufacturers in China that make these really nice, um, pretty sure it's China, could be Korea, I'm not sure. But these towels are awesome. I think this one's about 500 GSM but it's not super, super, super plush. Like some of those towels, the fibers are a little bit shorter, but it's nice and thick. I really like that. But I only got a few and they were pretty expensive because I wanted to see if I could maybe sell them, but nah, I'm not gonna do that now. You have to buy like two to 3,000 at a time and then they become cheaper, but you're still spending like a thousand or more dollars on microfibers. They're intended to sell. You're supposed to buy them in bulk to sell them, but I can't swing that. That's, I don't have a store like that, so I'm not going to bother. I just wanted a couple of them to see how they are, but man, I would love to have a couple of hundred of these if they would work with me, but I tried negotiating and they, they can't do it. It would cost a lot of money to get these towels over here. So I'll just deal with what I have for now. This is looking awesome. Very, very happy with it. So we just polished the entire hood. Oh yeah, that's looking really nice. Beautiful and still using the polisher with the orange light country pad. So now we're gonna go on to this fender, continue down the side, do the roof, basically get all around the vehicle. Then we're gonna come back to these areas and maybe hand polish them a little bit. I also have this little polisher from SPTA. This is their rotary, but I got their little extension with all sorts of different heads on it. This is the smallest one that they have, a half inch, little polishing head and I have a ton of polishing pads and things in here that we're going to play around with. So, I mean, this goes all the way down to half inch pads. Look at those little things. I don't know how well they're going to do, but we'll see. But I'm sure these, nope, not those. I'm sure these little guys can do really well around these tighter areas in here where you really can't even get into it all. So we'll play around with that. I already got to 
connect everything and use it and it's very smooth. It works really well as far as that. So we'll see when we start polishing it, how it works. Customer service on the SPTA machines and all of their stuff is actually really good. This little adapter here, when I bought the kit with this whole thing, the adapter didn't even connect to their own polisher here. They sent me the wrong size. So I contacted them and they sent me out the correct diameter adapter for their polisher. So be wary of that if you want to order this. Um, when you do get the polisher in and the size isn't correct, if it's off, just contact them. Go to the website itself and contact them and their uh, customer service is very, very good. They communicate very quickly, very well, and they sent this out at no charge to fix it. So SPTA stuff, I am loving it. You know, it is affordable. I wouldn't say it's super, super high end, but for what it is, it works very well. So I'm happy with that. All right, enough blabbing, let's continue. So we're making progress around the driver's side. This has been polished. Look how nice and crisp that looks. Really nice looking. And now we're working on the door here and look how hazy it is. That's definitely needing some refinement. It's got deeper stuff down here. So this stuff we're gonna see, we might need to compound it or this might take care of it, we'll see. So the heavier stuff here, and then as we go into this panel that's already been polished, it looks nice and crisp. It looks really, really good. So from that hazy mess, we want it to look like that. Huge improvement, looks really nice and crisp and clear. We might have to go a little bit heavier on this section here. But let's see if the orange pad and M205 can cut it and make it look better. And we're still working with the cordless polisher on the same battery. So I've done pretty much the whole front end except for the grill and the bumper, but all the big panels done. And this door, and now I'm working on this door and still on the battery and now it's in the red. So I'm gonna use it until it dies completely and then switch out the battery. But that's pretty impressive so far, not bad. And it does have the trigger lock. I think I mentioned that before, so I just lock it in and, and then I'll adjust the speed here. Oh, it just died now. All right, that's interesting. Let's switch out the battery. I like that it doesn't just slow down, it just cuts out. Fresh new battery. <laughs> that was dumb. I had the trigger lock on. That was completely my fault. All right, fresh new battery. Check it. Yep, all in the green. Looks good, let's continue. So I hit that pretty heavy and I even went on to the lip here. It doesn't really generate heat at all, so that's good. And those results are pretty nice. I might, I might go a little further, but how this looks. Wow, nice. It's a deeper scratch there. Whoa, very, very nice. So check that out, guys. Huge improvement. There's still a little bit of swirling in there just a little bit some minor minor stuff but it's so minor i mean look at the results now huge difference yeah there's some heavier stuff there there was some other scratch like right there some light light little swirl some of those are going to remain i'm not going to go after those too much man that's great i might hit this panel just one more time and i'm going to work my way up here to the upper panels but you can see those are the upper panels and how hazy and nasty it looks and then nice and crisp those are awesome results all from this little machine it's pretty impressive and i just ran out of juice now as you saw yeah i just wish it had more batteries 
but for what it is, it's uh, it's pretty decent. All right, let's work up here and get all that haziness out of there. Still have a few little drips coming out of here and it, it messes things up when I go and wipe down with the towel, so. Oh well, that just happens. Now, if you wanna check out those lights behind me, those Agilux lights, check out the video up in the corner or check the link down below. I'll try to have all the different tools and products and everything that we're using there down in the description, plus the cordless uh, little polisher here. Oh man, you can see the difference in the haze right there. And right at this curve, it's still rotating. So it's holding pretty well. Not bad. I know I'm holding it all weird, but sometimes this gets, the end of the battery here gets a little bit too close to the panel, like right there but the Rupes polisher would do the same thing, so it's not a big deal. But lots of curviness on this panel. Well, there's definitely some body work in this line here. I don't know what they did, but they chewed up this edge along inside here. This is all painted, usually plastic along this, but it looks like they chewed it up pretty bad. Yeah. I have to get in there with that little mini polisher and try to get that looking better because that just stands right out, unfortunately. So it works well around the curves here. Did a really good job. You angle it a little bit, but you have the little curve here. You got this weird little dip curve here, but it held its own. It did really good. You can see a little bit of hazing there. I can hit that a little bit more and refine it, but overall, that was just the first hit. And that is incredible results. All that haziness is gone. It looks really nice. It's deceiving with all this metallic. It makes it look a little funky sometimes, but you can tell that the defects are gone when you really zoom in on it and focus the light. You know, you get these little tiny things here and there that I'm not concerned about. The overall effect is that clarity. It's beautiful. So that's great. So you can see the haziness here, no clarity, and then down here, you can see crisp reflections, which is nice. Look at that, that's a big mess. That's nice and clear. Awesome. No, you can't come up here right now, I'm busy. I'm busy. All right, we pulled out the little half inch polisher here, and I gotta put very little bit on here because it's a rotary and it will will sling so i'm going to kind of prime this a little bit because i don't want oh my gosh mister calm yourself there we go i want to prime this enough so it's not going to create a lot of sling it's probably going to make sling anyway but oh well so i have it pretty much on the lowest speed no buddy no i'm busy i'm busy all right i have it on the lowest speed here so let's kick it on it's going to get a little noisy not bad right Oh, that's cool. It's, it's pretty easy to... Yeah, it's not bad. It's nice and smooth. And I can get into these little areas pretty easily. Let's see how it did. Oh, not bad at all. I'm going to probably go a little further, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's much better. Oh, mister's all upset that I didn't give him any attention. Sorry. Okay, not bad. That actually got into there really well. So here's what we're talking about. See inside that edge? It was actually hazy all the way up to the middle point there. You can see it definitely created a little bit more haze, but I should be able to quickly kind of go over that with the polisher here and get up close to the edge, and the edge here will actually polish it into that, that tight corner there. Not bad at all. Sorry, I had to switch out my light. My, uh, my little Astro light just ran out of batteries. I forgot I didn't have it plugged in for a while. So because it is rotary, it did leave that little bit of a hologram haze in there. 
but I can actually get up close enough with the polisher here and it will refine it a little bit more. So even though it's not going to get into that gap perfectly, it will still polish it out. So let's hit that really quick. It does create a little bit of dust. All right, so it actually cleaned up that haze around the edges there really, really well. I can't get into the tight, tight, tight edge there, but that's okay because all the major panels and major stuff around it look really, really good now. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. So this little guy works pretty well for what it is, you know? You're not gonna polish a whole car with this. But. So this panel right here is really, really bad. So let's see how we can improve that with the combo that we've been working with, see how much of these defects we can really get out. So how does that look? Wow, not bad at all. That is awesome. So the paint is definitely a little on the softer side. You can still see a few stray little swirls in there, but again, it's not bad at all. Okay guys, I just went live on YouTube uh, using my phone and answered a bunch of questions and kind of did a quick little review of this. And I'll do more of an official one on this, but you guys are going to see me using this a lot in here and showing my advice on it and, and all that. Um, but so far, I'm loving this thing. So if you want to check out that video, I will have it either in the corner or down below, but check out that little live stream that I did with um, the live review of that polisher. But some of you guys were asking uh, to open up some of the packages because towards the end of that video, um, I got a mail call, a bunch of stuff just came in and I don't even know what some of this stuff is at all. And I have more packages coming in on UPS that I just got a notification for. Three big boxes, 27 pounds, 37 pounds, 58 pounds. I have no idea what that stuff is. It's coming in this Saturday, which is two days from now. We'll find out. So I just got this thing and you can get this uh, from the VX5000 like online store. And whew, this thing is awesome. So this is the other triangle head. It's actually a little bit more advanced than the other little triangle head you put on the end of that steamer. This is actually gonna be a little bit shorter, but it revolves, which is nice. And you have all the holes around here for the steam to come out of. So it's not just one jet stream, it's all these holes the steam comes out of. And it's, it's a big head, it's actually pretty big. And then you get these little things where you tie the uh, microfibers in so it holds them, you can see the little teeth there, so it'll firmly hold the microfiber in place. This will be great for carpets and upholstery. Awesome, I'm very, very happy about this. So there's some other little buttons on here, I don't know what they do. Oh, it locks it, that's what it is. This swivels and you can lock it in place. So we'll play around with this, you'll see this in other videos to come. But I just got these boxes, select supply. Oh, I know what this is. I think I know what this is. Aha, uh -huh. spray nine, got it in the gallon form. Now, can this be diluted? This might have more information on it, but this stuff kills all sorts of viruses. It's on the list of killing coronavirus and COVID-19 and all that stuff. So yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Within 30 to 45 seconds, a minute or so, it will kill bacteria, viruses, mildew on hard non-porous surfaces. Contains no bleach. So, and it destroys odors also. I'll read up in this stuff. I don't think it can be diluted. I'm not sure. And if it does, I don't know if it affects the um, disinfecting power of it, but that's awesome. I forgot I had actually ordered that. When I see it online on, on Amazon, I buy it up or buy a lot of it. And then I have, this, limited goods, this might be also spray nine. Yep. Okay, good. I bought it in the 32 ounce bottle. So a bunch of these, so I can use that gallon 
to refill these. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. We needed these. So we use these for our full interior de uh, detailing and cleaning and disinfect everything. So I'm glad that came in because this stuff sells out very fast online. So let's continue polishing. I did have to uh, grab my little three inch here and I'm using that to get into all these little areas here. So in here, I'm gonna blow the pad out. Let's just put a couple of drops. I'm gonna pop this up because I can't get to the lip. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Oh, this rain. Ooh, that's nice. Get all the way down here to the lip, so you do need to pop this up. Otherwise, the polisher will just not reach that bottom edge here. It'll just kind of bump up against the plastic there and you don't want that. Open doors and things like that if you do need to get in there. I generally never need to open doors like that unless there's defects really close to the door edges. Usually it's not a big deal. Well, there's a little bit more over here I'm gonna attack. Needs a little bit more cutting. Ah, there's a deep scratch there I can't go after anymore, unfortunately. But that's okay, the rest of it looks really good. There's little dust nibs in here from factory I can see, or it was repainted, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna attack this. Oh yeah, huge improvement. That was much, much better. So sometimes you need to attack it just one more time, same combo and just go a little bit slower or bump up the speed just a little bit more. And that's what I call an extended paint enhancement. You just go a little bit further. Instead of just hitting it once, you might need to hit it a few times with the same combo and then it'll be fine. And see if I can get away with that. And in this case, yeah, that looks really nice. That looks nice and crisp. There's a big scratch there, see that? You can see that it's like a long curvy scratch. I, I could probably attack that, but I can tell that it's not gonna come out completely. You're only gonna see it when bright lights hit it like this, but it's at such a weird angle, you're not gonna see it when you're walking around the vehicle or even when the sun hits it, you're not gonna see that. There are some defects that show up in the lights here that you're just not gonna see in the daylight but I use these lights so that I can at least see what I'm doing and correct the paint to an appropriate degree. And that looks awesome. 